2019, <laughs> baby. Hey, everybody. Here we I'm, go. <laughs> I'm Tom Vassell. Yes. See, now you guys. That was ex- super delayed. Yeah, it was. Oh. Yeah. Now you oh. guys expect us to be like crazy, stupid. Well, as I was just so saying off camera. Throw you a curveball. It's a new year. I, for one, have matured. And I no longer uh, am interested in, in uh, tomfoolery and uh, sophomoric comedy. Dude, you just farted while you walked down the hallway. <laughs> Anywho. Yes, um, <laughs> and see, it's improv. <laughs> so, uh, today we're going to be doing a couple live videos. This is the first one. Uh, this is a back talk, and then we'll be doing our top 10 anticipated games for 2019 at noon. But we're going to be talking about the video we did a year ago about our top 10 2018 anticipated games. Yes. Were we right? Were we wrong? What maybe were the game, we? Maybe do, the game hasn't the, come out yet. That's the better do, question. do we even remember what was on that list? When I say matured, I basically mean I forgot a lot of what happened. <laughs> so you're old. Yes. Yeah. I don't recall most of these things. I don't think you can pull that off till you turn like, what is it? 45, is it? Is that, what, what's For, the age? I started forgetting stuff when I was I, like in my I'm late 20s. I'm only one year away from that. That's. I, I used that excuse then when I was like Actually, 12. I'm my mom five was like, months away from that. young kids can remember all kinds of stuff. Uh, no, it's like, not well, me. this is bad for me then. Yeah, not right. me, yeah, yeah. I am concerned for the future of my brain. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to show the games. Melody made us our PowerPoint, and it's in alphabetical order of the games. Oh, okay. So then we'll pop up and we'll see what number it was for whoever it was. That's. Just a way to do it. I like it. I like it. All <laughs> day. All right. Well, let's see what the first game is here. Alone. Not mine. That was my number eight. That was on no one else's list, I think. You were alone. You were definitely alone on that one, yes. Here's the... Okay, so this is the first... Huh. I, I, I'm actually disappointed with this one a little. Really? Ooh. I don't dislike the game. The game is okay. It is essentially a dungeon crawl... With three dungeon masters and one person who is alone. They're running through the dark trying to figure out, fight monsters, and get out. Um, Sounds fair. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Like, oh, wow, this person must be uber powerful. Right. Not really, but neither are the dungeon masters. See, here's what I found after playing it, that each person is playing one-third of a single dungeon master. Yeah. That's... Yeah, but, the game, but it does sound better to call it that than triplets. <laughs> <laughs> it plays better one versus one. Okay. But then it, the alone thing doesn't really make any Together. sense. Well, I guess if there's only two people there, you are more alone than if there were four people there. Oh, sure. The whole thing is like the one person who's alone doesn't see the dungeon. It's like a hidden movement game except the dungeon masters have their map and they're, they're tracking your movement and you're just moving and they put out tiles and show you where you're right, at right. Yeah. and they'll be like, you hear a noise coming from the southeast and the person's like, wah! So it's very scary for southeast. that person. Is there like directional things? Yeah. I sure yeah. hope so because I'll be like... I know. <laughs> Anyhow, it has good miniatures. I think some people are going to like it but the whole concept of three verse one fell this flat for me. sounds better than it ended up being, I guess. I Is agree. there a solitaire mode? How would you... I'm just saying this should be. How would you do that? It's called alone. No, how would you do How would you do that? You'd put this game in a drawer and get a video game out. If there was an called Doom. Where you're alone. Skyrim, (laughs) yes. Yeah. That game is called uh, Can't Hold Flashlight and Shotgun at the same time. (laughs) All right, what's the next one we got here? Betrayal Legacy. Hey, this was also on my list. This was my number four. Yeah, everything was in alphabetical order. Mm-hmm. Th- it is if in, in all the ten of your in games In alphabetical are first. order mean Tom's games Well, go see, first. now that I know this, my top ten anticipated, I picked Aardvark. <laughs> the game. Aardvark, oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, so Betrayal Legacy was very anticipated by me. I was excited about it because the legacy aspect is interesting, and I, th- I think that Rob does a better job taking an existing game mm-hmm. than making a new one up. Based on the other two right, right, games, right. Um, what two games would you be speaking? Yeah, you know, Pandemic and Seafall. But oh. you guys, I remember this distinctly from this video. Were, we're not as interested in this. Not well, no, not to play it. I actually enjoyed playing it. Well, right, right. I, I, we at some point may finish it. Um, right. I liked it so far. I thought it did a good job at bringing it. I'm guessing that these scenarios are going to be more balanced, if only because there's fewer of them. Right. And I'd be curious to see what the game looks like when we're done. So far, I've enjoyed it. They started really small. 
Yes. Then they got a little bit bigger, and I'm assuming it'll get bigger as time goes by. I don't think there's any, like, huge sudden surprises in it. Maybe there is. We'd have to find those out as we went through. Mm. But I like it. Yeah. I just need to play it more. You were not as huge on it. I mean, the problem is it's coming from a game I don't like. You know what I mean? So how much could they really differentiate it to please me while betraying everyone <laughs> who um, wants the original game represented? You know? That's true. I would not be interested I mean, in a I, legacy I, I, game of a game I don't like. Sure, of course. So for what that game is, for what it did with Betrayal, I thought it did a good job. Mm -hmm. I just don't, I really, really don't like Betrayal of House on the Hill. So, you know, I'm, I'm set up for disappointment there. Got it. Cool. All right, what we got next? Hey, it's Sam. No. Century, oh no, That's it's Z. me, man. What's up? Century <coughs> Eastern Wonders. Century Eastern Wonders was the follow-up to the uh, Darlin Century Spice Road. I like Spice Road. I still do. Eastern Wonders. Actually, I, I got to replay it recently with the uh, Gollum edition, and I, I, it's, it's fun. I, I, I've really enjoyed it. It's got a good flow. Spice, the first one. The first one. Eastern Wonders I finally played, and I thought it just took the original clean concept and made it convoluted hmm. without any extra depth, really. I don't think it's convoluted, just that it's all on the board. It's the same concept. There's just a lot more going on. It takes a lot of the randomness out. Instead of you getting cards that are yours, you look at the board, the board becomes your cards, and you're trying to find the, the optimal method of moving your ship around. Sure, but it didn't feel like it added anything except it's slower and there's more going on. Did you play the combo game? No. That I liked. It okay. uses the card, it, but it's still more. The, the first one is still the fastest way to play. I just, again, it robbed what the original one did well was quick turns. You know, the idea of like getting a Euro game in with some thinking, some neat concepts in 30 minutes. The second one is still about <laughs> as light, I would say, hmm. but takes 60 minutes. So I just didn't. I, I, I played, I was like, okay. No reason to play this one when the first one exists. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've, never, I've never played the uh, Eastern Wonders one. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt about it. So, eh, that was what? mildly. What? <laughs> I said I've never. You, ah! never you didn't even listen to him at all, no, dude. You didn't. I've never played the Eastern Wonders one. And then you said that's how I felt about it. No, no, I was ignoring what he said and <laughs> continuing my train of thought. <laughs> okay, it just sounded yeah. funny. <laughs> all right, what's next? All right. Detective, a modern crime. This was your number one. This was my number one. Was this on anyone else's list? I don't remember. Uh, I guess not. That's weird. Hmm. I maybe I didn't know so much <coughs> about it. When also, nowadays a game from Portal always will have me nervous based on rules. Sure. And they're even though technically he has said the, the, the designer for the company and the runner of the company that he's hoping to streamline his designs. That's not apparent from the designs. This game is has a lot going on. Now, yes. rules wise, it, you know, it's not so much. It's it's a game you can learn, but how much involvement is expected of you? How much you need to devote in time and energy and and just you know to really get into this game? It's going to be a lot. I definitely know more about one time period of history after playing that game uh, yeah, than yeah. I've ever known before. That, that really doesn't talk to streamlining the game though does it just because it's longer a game can be long and still streamlined right yeah 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 I think, um, I think this is a pretty tight package oh I agree here's the thing about this one this is a very esoteric game this is a game for a specific kind of player in a specific kind of mood probably I agree but for what it is this is probably one of the most thematic games I've ever played yeah, that I agree on. I put it on my distinctive I mean, this themes game for that is, reason. This is if this is what you want, you know, a game which puts you in the shoes of a detective, gathering clues, talking to people, finding out what happened. There, I, I can't think of another game really that does that does that in a game in a, in a setting in a way that involves you as the player more than this. Well, that, there's almost too much theme at some points. And that, that would be one of my negatives about the game. It's, well, not Too negative. Thematic. I guess not, not the negative, but if you're getting into like this. Like if you, you know, if you fail at the end, you, you do die. <laughs> no, I'm saying 
somebody actually does the number the amount of information in this game that you get versus the amount of information you need is immense sure we'll sure. be like Boom, and at the end they're like how old was susan like i never even met susan that's true <laughs> you know I, I i don't mind that as much i just wish there was an easier way to sometimes determine what was important mm-hmm but I guess that's being a good detective, yeah, yeah. which I'm not. Which, yeah, I would I would flounder <laughs> and then go, uh, you know, direct school traffic. <laughs> All right, what do we got next? Another detective. Which Two is, in a row. Yeah. Also Z is number five. Well, this is not out, so uh, I haven't played it. So that's one game so far out of these that <laughs> hasn't come out yet. Well, I did play a prototype of this, which is I think I played before I made this list anyway, which I was very excited about. And... Um, Put it on the list. I, I'm looking forward to it. It's got Vincent Detroit artwork. That never hurts. No. But, no, it doesn't. But I haven't played it. When's it's this not coming out? out? 2019. Oh, obviously. I mean, like, is it coming out soon? Is it coming out soon, though, Do you know? It's not obvious. 2021. 2021. Next I don't slide. Know. Keep, I have keep no asking. idea. Keep asking. Dice Hospital. This was my number nine. <laughs> Did any of mine actually make it? I'm just... You I'm get the last. Sure. You get the end. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My number nine is Dice Hospital. Um, this was a game in which you basically put dice in ambul in a hospital. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's true. The patients are dice, and you're trying to heal them, but each turn they click down one, and so if they get down to zero, so wait, wait, wait. So they're when they're dead. alone, they die. Think about it. A single die. Huh? Ah, come on, baby. That's gold. Excuse me. Mature so. humor. <laughs> oh, so dad humor. <laughs> Is that what we're... That, that's a Zeke. Anywho, um, the dice are coming to your hospital, and then you basically place workers good, to right? heal as many of those dice as you can. It's a lot lighter than I had expected. Like, a very light game, really. Okay. But I enjoy it. It's nice. It has some cool components. Well, you have to buy that yeah. add-on pack to get those. But even without that, it works really well. And this is one... I'm curious, like how into the consciousness of gamers this one will hit. Like, I haven't seen a lot of people talking about it. Is um, it out wide? I mean, it's, it's as out as it will I don't be. think it was out wide. I think it went sent to Kickstarter backers, okay. which is, I don't know if there's the distribution. Was it at Essen? I feel like it might have been. I don't I've know. I've never seen it except the one you have you had or have. I don't know. That's so, I don't know. All right, well, that's Dice Hospital. Hmm. Let's see here. <laughs> now we got... Another one of Z. All right, this is an expansion. Elder Sign. Boo! Omens of obviously, the I like an expansion for a game. I, I hated it actually. This is by far. It basically takes the original game, and then. <laughs> I'm kidding. Are you trolling here? <laughs> <I can't. laughs> no, this was great. Yeah, it's. Uh, I liked the Egyptian, the Egyptian setting that they do for um, Arkham stuff. They've got a few sort of set places, right? They go to, like, oh, the ocean and the Innsmouth and all that Sure, stuff. when they run out, they just make a full third edition. That's how it works. Yeah, basically. They're like, then we start we're, out again. Of, we're out of locations. You know? <laughs> make another edition. So uh, <laughs> this one for Elder Sign was pretty cool. I like that uh, the expansions, the last few, have been much more thematic, and they follow this concept of having different acts, like Act 1, Act 2. When you finish one part of, I think you begin in Cairo or something like that, then you move on to a second stage, and from that you can no longer backtrack, and the challenges become harder, and it's harder to get things. So you need to prep before you travel. It's cool. Really liked it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would definitely say if you like Elder, Z Elder Sign, the omens of something something expansions are all really thematic. Cool. cool. All right. <coughs> hey, another one that's mine. <laughs> we'll get to you, Sam. This one, Epoch the Awakening, was renamed Vindication. And I oh, love really? this. Oh, this is a horribly boring game. Yes. Wow. Horribly boring. Yeah, yeah, he didn't like it. No. Horribly boring. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't boring. <laughs> <laughs> it was horribly boring. I really if enjoyed this game. Like, you loved it. I really if do you like this I was ambivalent. If you struggle you play with it. insomnia, no, no. play this game. <laughs> Here's the thing. I think you kind of went Cured. in. You went in looking for something that the game wasn't. It was like a cube. Yeah, I went in looking for a good game. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. No. Ooh. I, I, oh, yes. Uh, I really enjoyed this game. 
Oh, if that had uh, hit the camera. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that, that would have been fantastic. That would not have been fantastic. If <laughs> Did Derek have a heart attack? Okay, anyway. So, uh, Vindication, which the game turned out to be, a game where you crash on an island and then you got to rebuild your life. And you're collecting different uh, companions along the way, fighting monsters, going on adventures. But you're essentially getting cubes of various colors and changing them to other cubes. That's like the focus of the game, if I boil it down. But it does so in a sandboxy sort of way. And I tend to like that. You can go anywhere, do anything. There's in each game you can add different modules in. I just love this game. It's also fast, like an hour, 75 minutes. I think you might like it. Well, that's not uh, saying much, man. Um, I don't know. That was pretty bland. All right, Fireball Island. Was this on anyone's list besides mine? Just you, man. Really? I thought this would be on yours. I was super pumped about this I one. Would, no, I, I didn't have the nostalgia factor pumping it like you did. Right, and I, ah. I, I on my list, put uh, you know games for adults. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really want to go down that road? <laughs> no. I like stupid stacky games. Uh, no, Fireball Island met my expectations. I hoped that it would be a better version of the original one. The original one, you just put a marble and it went down. You know, you, there was no, I wonder if I'll get hit or not. You knew. You just followed the road down. And, and really? Then, yeah. They just, and, and that game created enough positive memories to instill nostalgia in people? Yeah, because as a kid, you, were you rolled a marble. <laughs> <laughs> and the hits just keep on coming. Well, yes. <laughs> But also, you like to see marbles roll down and knock people over. That was just entertaining. So you're like, oh, yeah, but that game wasn't very good. And then they're like, we're going to make it to a good game. Yeah, and it worked well. I think they did a fantastic job. And the production, how they managed to put that board together, you got to give them huge props on that. Mm -hmm, yeah. Where the marbles come down and go in different directions. And I, that's an impressive engineering feat to me, the board. Right, right. Yeah, it is. All right. Very cool. Come on. Still no sand? Ah! <laughs> You picked all like last half of the alphabet games. That is amazing. That's where they all throw all the good games. Yep. Founders of Gloomhaven for me. Uh, this one I knew nothing about other than it had the word Gloomhaven in it. You got a V, a W, a Z. <laughs> yes. R. <laughs> Apparently, uh doesn't count. Nope. That's an S. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Uh, but anyway, uh, Founders of Gloomhaven was a, a a good game, but it is very different than Gloomhaven. It's Go just ahead. a basic tile laying. That doesn't mean you want the same. You two again. would absolutely like despise it. I, I, I don't. I, I don't think you would have enough bad words to say about it, and I don't think you would like it I because could it's use bad words. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> this is like one long censored. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I thought it was fine, but you would have to still talk me a little bit into playing it just because it's a pretty heavy game. Essentially, you're placing these buildings down, and you're going to be getting resources to put down better buildings, but you have to like follow paths around the board and okay. make sure they're connected. And there's a lot of thinking going on. And it has some neat things where you play an action, and everyone can do that action, that card you play. I like that aspect of the game. Um, but so. it's good. But not as amazing as I thought. So for the record, I hate games where you have to think a lot. Yeah, you do. Not not that you hate, but you hate games where you have to where I, you would put the thing down and I'd be like, oh, I see a really good thing for you to play through. Yes. You would hate that. I I would. So you're just supposed to keep your mouth shut. That's right. right. Sam. <laughs> I did make the list. With a game that almost didn't come out this year. Right. True. <laughs> every time, this is very, every convention, Sam's yeah. like, this is the convention it will come out. All right. No, Heroes of Black Reach is great. I, I have only played the drop zone part of it. And so. That's true. You haven't reviewed this one yet, have you? No, I haven't. I've done an unboxing of it because. I had to wait like can. years for it to come out. People will wait years for the review. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> you will feel my pain. <laughs> um. No, but this is, uh, this is I, I already knew I was going to, it's kind of a cheat for me, because I already knew that I liked the system that this game is built upon. Really, it's just a reskinning of Heroes of Normandy, which is a World War II squad level tactical game where uh, all of the... All of the tiles that comprise your units have all of their, their stats on it, so you don't have to keep going back to the book and, and re-looking up stats and how they match up against other stats. It's really a simple system, and it's really easy to play, and that's what I liked about it so much. 
This is just a 40K, Warhammer 40K skin over that with a few minor tweaks here and there, but it's really negligible. Uh, it's it's a great game. I've played the drop zone, so I do enjoy it, and and I just haven't haven't broken into the actual core set that I just picked up uh, a little while ago. Actually, I didn't pick it up. A friend of mine picked it up for me at one of his local game stores. So uh, it is great, and it definitely deserved my number one. I think um, after having played the drop zone. Cool. I'd be interested, like when we if we went back to the top ten of 2018 after you played some more, if it would like hit your top ten. I, th I think it probably would. Again, like I said, I've already played the system. I'm already familiar with the system. Um, I just have to get it to the table, that's all. Didn't they have a Cthulhu spinoff of uh, the original? Heroes also? of Normandy did. It was called Shadows Over Normandy. And the they had Deep Ones coming in out of the yeah. different stuff like that. So that was, eh, who cares? Um, I, I'm, I like the World War II aspect of it a little bit more. <laughs> Yeah, All right, let's go to another one. Is it another one for Sam? It is! Ima when it rains, it pours! <laughs> Imaginarium to Dream Factory. Did you even play this one? Nope. Sa didn't Z did. This was on my list as well, yeah. Oh, is yeah. it? I didn't play it. I we don't probably have another slide there. Know, uh, is it next slide shows Z? Yeah! <laughs> oh, okay. All right, well. All right. That's how this works. Because S is before Z. Oh, shoot. So I'm getting the, the short <laughs> stick here. On this I was one, thinking, yes. if you could rebrand yourself, you could just you would say every game that has an S with a Z, uh -huh. just to be jerky about to be it. Be like. just annoying. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yes. I already have a hard time pronouncing this yeah, language. Yeah, I, I you haven't speak actually played this game. So English. if you've, you've played it, you can take the helm. Yeah, yeah I played actually, it. Actually, you kind of talked me out of playing this one because you were like, "Yeah, it's okay." That was your really? what you told me. No, the game is. There are some choices in it that I thought were. Put art above function. Hmm. Right? There's a few things in it where you're going, yeah, this is like a cool indie movie, because it is a small game. This is, it did not get a, a particularly wide distribution. In fact, they tried to kickstart it for the US market and it failed. That's correct. That, right. I right. remember that. So this is kind of like an indie movie that you like a lot of it. It's got interesting concept. It's, you know, steampunky and the artwork is bizarre, but it's not without its rough edges. Because again, it's like a weird sort of game. Uh, I like it though. You are basically, it's one of the most Euro style games from Katala, who's either the designer or co-designer, I don't know. Um, and in it, you are basically selecting a card from a lineup. He's, he, he does that whole, you know, treadmill thing, right? Where things kind of fall off the end. He's co-designer. Uh, co-designer, okay. Um, so he, you know, you select something and then you have in front of you an area where you are going to build machinery and you collect goods, you cycle goods for different goods, you try to make victory points. It's got a really slow victory point progression. I think the end goal is only like 15 VP or something. But then you make them really slowly, especially at the beginning. That That's like a movie that starts too slow, you know. Overall though, I like it, but it's kind of a beast to teach because of, of the iconography and the cards. Some people have told me that the illustrations of the of the cards are off-putting. They're freaky. They are freaky. Yeah, and there's that big mouth thing in the game. Yeah, there's a big chomper. It's called the chomper. I'm trying to remember if this one's in the Dice Tower Library. Huh? I don't think. I don't it know. Is. It's hard to get. I think so. I like to give it a try. All right. Well, yeah, I like next? it. I do like it. That's our first crossover. <laughs> Ooh. Um. Oh boy. Haven't played this one yet. Master. Uh, we actually have it in, the, in our library. It just hasn't got played. The galaxy. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna find my way to put this on the cruise. That's my thing. Okay. You're the, gonna play this. The on one the thing cruise, I do okay. like about this game is the box cover. Yeah. Reminds me what 4X is staying for. I'm like, this is a 4X oh, game, which you. means uh, explore, expand, exploit, exterminate. I can explain? look at it. Was one of those explain you just said? That's the 4Xs of board game expand. rules. Expand. Explain. Expand. <laughs> Exasperate. Explain. <laughs> What else? Oh, the four X's of board gaming. Expand is definitely one. Explain. Expand. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. But Explain. Sure. Explain. Mm, 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 mm. Exfoliate. Exfoliate? That's Exfoliate? disgusting. Exfoliate? At the table, at the gaming table. Let's, exhume. Let's move on. Just, Pass my exhume. shame. <laughs> exhume. You have to say it with a liquid U. Exhume. Exhume. <laughs> <laughs> <Did you? laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Micropolis or Micropolis or whatever. This hit your top ten, I think, right? 
Yes, it did. And this is also Katala. There's no trend to be seen here. Move along. <laughs> Uh, I really like this one. It's a tile. If Katala game. ever is one of the designers for a pandemic game. Oh, I'm telling they you. Not well, even doing have the they haven't done a France yet. one yet. They haven't done you a France see, one. You will see Z running like he was at Gen Con at Essen. That's right. You, I'll he be will there. be like hoofing it. I mean, I will be full out. Probably have to pick me up with a shovel. Anyway, Micropolis is a tile laying game uh, in which you are building up an ant colony, trying to get the most points. What I really like about it is, as I've said before, the shape of the tiles. Uh, they are wedges, and so you put together, I don't know, eight or nine of them, and it's going to give you a circle that's supposed to represent the anthill. And there are paths within that anthill that will score based on, you know, if there's a queen in the, in the path, or different fruits that fell into their, you know, or they brought into the colony. I like it. It's light, straightforward, scales surprisingly well. This plays two through six, I want to say, and I've played with both of the extremes at the very least, and it really works well. And I just like it. It's a good filler. I mean, it's a like filler plus kind of level that I've really enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, really impressed with it. This is uh, the kind of game that I'm just sort of always content to bring to the table. There's not, not that prerequisite of like, well, am I really in the mood for this? This is always a good game to go. You know? That's cool. Uh, so yeah, it's fun. Acropolis. Very fun. This is me as well? I thought it someone else you. had this on their list. Uh, is it someone else too? I don't remember. No. Nope, just Z. Okay. Um, not on well, this didn't list. come out yet. So no, I it's coming played. out in 2019. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what the main thing to put it on the list for me was. Look at that artwork. Whose artwork is that? Vincent Dutre. Actually, he did like every 200 plus pieces of artwork for this game. Yeah, every card is a different artifact, and, and he it did them all. looks amazing. He told me. I asked him if he was a machine. Um, and he said, <laughs> bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> "No, no." He said that it's easy to do artwork for themes you like. He said before he takes the art onto a game, he wants to know if that game's interesting or if it's a theme that's interesting. Okay, that's cool. So, huh. but I was curious about this one. Maybe that delayed the game? I don't actually know what delayed this game. I don't know. I don't know. I saw the Kickstarter video and it looked interesting. Uh, it was from new designers and a new company, I think. So I was a little apprehensive about that. But the game looked interesting. They were at Gen Con just showing it. They weren't. Right. Yeah, we'll see. All right, what do we got next? Reavers of Midgard. The, oh, this... by the way, that was our second game that didn't come out. Here's our third. Yeah. Oh, this isn't out? Nope, not out. I did, did I did get to play a prototyped version of it at PAX Unplugged. Um, uh, they they showed it showed it to me. Um, they were demoing it at the con anyway. Okay. Um, but uh, they took some time in during our uh, nine o'clock thing that one night uh, to show me and a couple other guys the game. It is within the Champions of Midgard universe. Mm -hmm. it is, Champions of Midgard is kind of a hybrid uh, Euro and uh, Amerithrash game. This one, Reavers of Midgard, is a Euro game through and through. You still have some dice rolling, but it is pretty much a, a Euro game. Is it the same designer? I cannot remember. It's not on the box. Oh. <laughs> I cannot remember. I don't, I don't think designers' names uh, automatically. But it is a Euro style game. They're coming out with another game later on, and I can't remember the name of it. And that one's just gonna be a dexterity game. No, it's it's Big going Viking to be a ship. complete. Daggers of Midgard. <laughs> it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a completely Amerithrash game. Um, so, Chuckers. So of, yeah, Chuckers of Midgard. Um, this one would have been Cubers. At, right after the feast. You know, they had too much to their <laughs> That oh Vincent Detroit will not do artwork for that game. <laughs> well, they made... It's like, oh, no, not really a theme I like. <laughs> Last year was the year of poop games. Maybe this year would yeah. be the year of vomit games. That's, That's nope. This, this one is actually good. It is fun, and uh, we had a good time with it. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing a uh, full production copy of it. All right. Yep. What we got next? The Rise of Queensdale. Oh, baby. This was only on my list, This I was think. on my list as well. It was your number one, my number five. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, Alrighty. so go ahead. No, it's it's good. It didn't make my... I was super pumped about it because I like them as designers. Yes, absolutely. Um, they're a husband-wife team, and they do such a great 
combos. I like their exit games. They, and they're all over the You place. really like their, what's that puzzle dungeon game? Um, the adventure game? <laughs> Legends of Andor. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, yeah. no, that's, uh, that's, that's not, not them? them. No, 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 no. I, 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 I take that back. That's by the artist guy. Yeah. Okay, anyway. But they do some good games. And, I, and then I was excited because this was the first pure Euro game. Um, no, that would be Shutterstone. Yeah, um, this charge stone came out a little bit before this. I was excited. You're just, just full of right. retractions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the game. This I, wasn't even on my list. They have a lot of different kinds of games, and this was the first time they were doing a legacy style game. So I like their same model as from them. That's a roll and write. And it was good. Uh, and we will was, finish it someday. I thought it was really good, actually. I might have liked it more than you. Maybe I. I'm kind of just curious that this again, again, maybe it's because of the whole storm of games. Did you hear hardly anything about it? No, I think this game basically came and went, which is, and I I could see why that's that's not a cover to write home about. Really, I like the cover. Did you write anyone about it? It's like it was Rise of Queen. <laughs> Do you think I've ever <laughs> sponsored by <laughs> Mother? <laughs> the cover like, to know, Queensdale like, was a right delectable. People, like friends from high school or something, you know, Dear <laughs> Jimbo. I don't know. It looks um, like it was sponsored by Allstate. We are farmers. No. Bum, not bum, 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 bum. Not farmers insurance. Hey, man, Allstate. that's a different one. <laughs> Allstate. You're in the helping hands. Oh, okay. Got it. All right. Anyway, I really guys. liked it. I, I would love to have played more of it. We uh, Again, there's just too much going on. That's there's storm, actually too like many legacy games, right? And they take a long time. Not just legacy, but campaign games. And they ask for an investment in time. Yeah. yeah. So. And then you usually need to play them with the same number of players, which that's where the problematic stuff comes in because you want to play it. You're like, I'll, like I'll say, oh, I want to play Betrayal Legacy. Oh, but I already started with Sam and Z. It'd be kind of weird if I play it without them. Mm. And that's then Queensdale definitely is that case because we four played it, and we yeah. four need to have time. Right, to do right. It. No, no, it's tough. But I, I liked it, and I would certainly recommend it. Don't don't let this one pass you by if you like legacy games. And you want a Euro Legacy game. Because yeah. it's got fun stuff. I'm going. debating actually getting like a copy of this and just playing through it with my wife. Yeah, I'm going to play through it with myself. This, this one probably should have made it's my list after having played it. It, it should have made my list. Yeah, I, really? I, I really like this one. There we go. So that's a pretty yeah, but you, resounding okay. huzzah. All right, what we got next? Rising Sun was on Z's list. I do like this game. I think this made my top 10 of the year. Why? Well, I wonder, I'm trying to think why it wasn't on my list. The only reason I think maybe was because me and you had already played a production copy of it. We did after Gen Con. Remember they gave out 50 copies? And so we went and played the production copy of it. And then we no, sent it back to that and, guy. And we didn't play it because it was... We didn't put it on our list because we had already played it? That doesn't make sense. No, because you had put another game on your list for that reason. I think just because we already knew it was a good game, so there was nothing to anticipate. Right. Maybe. Mm. He had played it too, though. He had only played that one time. I played a prototype, a prototype. of it a We had played the actual ago, game. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, this is garbage. <laughs> Eric Lang just lost his mind. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? He's designed a couple more games than I have. I will give him the benefit of the doubt, I believe it was a saying. And uh, so, yeah, I put it on the list. Actually, I put it on my number two. I'm assuming because all the at that point we must have already known all the art and all the you know. Oh yeah, well no, like I said, they had already released the full production. Okay. They had like so. some of them had been shipped early for Gen Con that year. I was excited about it. The one thing that surprised me the most about this game, I have to say, is that I prefer the game with a lower player count, hmm. which is weird. Which is weird, right? I like this game best at three, mainly because I have fewer people to lose to. So you have a one, th no, not a one third. That's too high. For well, you. I will be third place. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's a bronze medal in any Olympic category. That's why he plays a lot of solo games. His chance of winning is higher. Gold, baby. Gold or bust. That's my upcoming game, by the way. Gold or bust. Kickstarter. All right, what's next here? Root. This was my number five. I had no idea this game was going to take off like it did, though. But you were excited because of the original cavern or cave or whatever? Right, the vast. Oh, yeah. I was excited because this was another asymmetrical game. I like that artwork. It has that. It gave me a red wall vibe with those books I liked. Yes. Uh, Watership Down and etc. And so I thought that was a cool idea. And that was pretty much the extent I knew about it. I didn't realize it was a secret war game. You know. So that it's. And obviously we don't need to talk about more. But just 
has taken off like a storm. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah, really good big hit. game route. A Song of Ice and Fire! A Song of Ice and Fire. I am currently painting this right now, well, at least my half of it. And um, it, uh, Roy and I were just talking about this the other yesterday about how we don't know if this is going to take off. It's almost too much of a niche category. Mm -hmm. um, Miniatures are tough and, anyway. In a, in a completely crowded field. Mm -hmm. So um, the production quality is amazing. The gameplay is very fun. Um, and uh, this is the first game that I've, miniatures game that I've played where your units are on boards or, you know. Uh, right. Uh, what I can't remember what they're you call them. They're on the same base. <coughs> yeah, they're all on the same base. Rank and, you, and file is what it's and called. And you move them. You move them like this. This is the first game that I've ever played that way, except for, except for uh, that other one that came up from Fantasy Flight. Um, Battle. No. Rune, Rune, Rune Wars. Rune Wars. Rune Wars. Rune Wars. So, yeah. This the I played both of these almost the same time for the first time, and I like this one better than Rune Wars. Yeah, so. but the thing is, I don't think I don't think a good miniatures game. Like, a miniatures game, the odds of a miniatures game succeeding has to be immense. I mean, look immensely how popular... Immensely low. Immensely yeah, low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, look how pop... I mean, Fantasy Flight had Star Wars Legion. Yeah. And even that one's not blowing down the roof. Yeah, no, that's... Rune funny. Wars didn't do too well. This one is doing... As far as we can tell, okay. But right. again, that's because well, we miniatures gaming is a niche. Honestly, we don't really have our finger on that pulse either. No. Um, I don't touch corpses. Uh, wow. A corpse doesn't have a pulse. Right. And so, anyway. Uh, uh, so, I, I can't really say yes or no or whether, or not, <laughs> whether or not this game is going to succeed. I mean, it, it probably will in, in a lot of different areas. But uh, The thing um, for me about this one that kept me from being interested is that Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire, whatever. Those novels and, those, and that, that show, there's battles, but half the time, they take place in the background. Yeah. Like, oh, and this army went here, and they defeated yeah, this army. But that's not going to make a particularly interesting miniature. No, 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 game. I get it. And I'm saying half I'm, the characters... I'm moving by the... You know, I'm walking down the hall. No, no, but I'm saying that half the characters in the game aren't even, like, out in the field. They're, like, backstabbing. The whole game's oh, of a, The Game of Thrones board game did a good job at bringing that to life because it took this macro oh, look at everything. Oh, I yeah, well, I, I think they've they've handled it well with the different background characters that... Right, they're not like on the board. They're like sitting over here and they give you a special ability. Right. Oh, I think, I think so that's they're a good, still I, influencing what's going yes, on? Yes, they are. And I think that's a that's a thematic inclusion for the game. Sure, I think but why do you need well a miniature that. for it then? Because Simon. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Yeah, I retract yeah. my question. <laughs> All right, what we got next? Oh, oh, this one didn't come out. Can't talk about it. Yes, um, I have played this three times now, and uh, this is true. It has not been. <coughs> this is a lock for Sam's top ten of 2019. Produced, but this is an amazingly fun game. Um, I love almost everything about this game. Uh, the miniatures are great. Uh, the it comes with terrain. Uh, with buildings and trees and all of this other kind of stuff, and this, am I correct in saying that the the miniature scheme are smaller than normal? Yeah, this is on so a you can very have like a smaller scale. You can have like big giant creatures fighting each other. That's almost correct. battle lore. Yes. Yeah. See, that kind of has me interested. I've always yes. thought that's more interesting than having normal size. And then if you want a giant, you got to go buy this massive miniature. But if the miniatures are smaller, you can have dragons and all kinds of cool yeah, stuff. One of the yes, first, so, yeah. one of the first thing that drew me, drew, drew me to this game was the fact that they were using actual historical accounts that were reported back in medieval times for the basis of their scenarios. Right. So if you're going into a village uh, and you're looking for a werewolf, it's because there were actual uh, reports from the the peasantry and people that lived in that village of a werewolf. So people but the, were but, sent in. But in this game, there actually is a werewolf. Oh, yes, of course. Okay. Yeah, there, there actually is. was a werewolf. <laughs> That's okay. It no, just, it no just was a hairy no. dude no. who yeah, didn't just, like to wear a shirt. Yeah, he didn't wear a shirt. <laughs> what? And, and they didn't. <laughs> he, 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 he couldn't afford shavers. Or got it, got it. <laughs> He's just a poor guy. Yeah. Like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> and the it's legend just, begins. But this this is a this is a great game. Um, I really 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 enjoy it a lot. So looking forward to seeing the production copy. Joan of Arc. All right. How did Joan of Arc get in? Uh, 
Alphabetic order there. No, it's called Time of Legends yeah, or something Time first. Of Legends. Got it, okay. Treasure Island, this was the one game that was on all three of our lists. That yes, I do remember. It was, it was 10 for Sam. It was 8 for me. 8 for you, and what was it for me? Uh, Treasure. It's no, it's not on your list. Oh, it wasn't on my <laughs> list. <laughs> and you're the one who liked it the most. <laughs> That's he's, true. He's trying to be part of the cool kids. Sorry, man. You out. <laughs> I apparently can't remember very well. No, I yeah. enjoyed this one a lot. I, yeah? Yeah, I, I hated it. it. I know you did. Oh, man. Uh, you hated it a lot. But I, I, I thought it was... I say bring back the barf game we were speaking of. <laughs> I thought it was. I thought it was a very thematic treatment. I think that's what you don't like about it. You want it a straight logical deduction game, and it's not. It's thematic deduction, which is a big no, I difference. Hate the, I don't like games that are imprecise. But the rule book specifically says if you're not sure, you got them. So that is precise. I hate, I hate that. I hate that. There's a need for a rule like that. Why that rule? Like, totally takes it out. I don't know why. Out. I just hate it. I mean, it's like <laughs> miniatures games. Like, measuring versus a hex overlay. I'll play miniatures games all the live long day if it's a hex overlay. If I have to measure... You know Twilight Imperium 4 has a hex overlay, right? I said a live long day, not week. No, you can get that done in a day. I, I guarantee I, I it. I beg to differ, but <laughs> I, I don't normally it. beg. So. <laughs> uh, anyway... I just hate the whole drawing lines on a board, and you're like, well, it kind of goes over that. I hated it. Okay, I hated it. But a lot of people will like it. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's different. I mean, again, if you're looking for something different. Yeah. I like I it. I didn't say good. I said different. I also think it's super thematic because it's when you, you're drawing circles and measuring, it, just see, it feels like you're drawing on a pirate map trying to figure out what a treasure yeah, is. Exactly. That's what's cool about it. All right, so take it off Z's anticipate, put it on mine. Right. Ooh, Sukuyumi. Did you like this down. one? Because I couldn't tell from your other <laughs> I've list. I've never that heard you... him mention <laughs> yeah. Sukuyumi Full Sukuyumi Moon Down. Sukuyumi Full Moon Down. This is a game that uh, this is a big game, and I played it three times at Gen Con when I got my review copy, and I don't think I've ever done that with any game ever. Um, played it three times. You really got a good play. No, playing. no. Talking about <laughs> play it three times at the convention that I got it. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. I played. Um, Probably not. This is a huge game, though. This is he not forged some, three times this, at the yeah, convention. No, come on, that's this is not a little stupid card game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the young games are stupid. But uh, this one is great. It has asymmetrical player powers. Uh, they each faction plays honestly completely different from the other factions, and yet I do believe that they are all balanced. Uh, they have some factions that are more powerful, but you have fewer units. Uh, the, the less powerful factions have a horde of units. So it's, it really does balance out very well. It's a great, fun game. It does take a little bit long, probably around the two to two and a half hour mark, but it is fun very much so. And Gray Fox Games has picked this up, and they're going really? to do a miniatures version of the game. Is so, there measuring or are hexes and such? There's hexes. Boom, baby, Modular I'm board. in. Modular board, it's really, really fun. Someone in the chat said you should try Talon. Talon's from GMT. It's uh, like X-Wing, but with hexes. Like they said I should try having some talent? No, Talon. Well, no, that's, everyone said that, but I don't, re I don't, don't read those read, comments out because it happens redundant. so often. Come on, those are obvious. <laughs> Talon, what? No, I've never heard of Talon. Yeah, it's like a, it's like X Wing. It's by GMT. GMT. That's why I haven't heard of it. Oh, I have seen that cover actually. Oh, right, but, but it has hexes rather than the measuring stuff out that the X Wings do. Well, there's a yeah. lot of miniatures games that have hexes. That's true, and they're mostly from GMT. All right, let's go on. <laughs> All right, we're still with Sam. Yeah, yeah here we go. Viking Yarl is the word is Viking it, I haven't, with a v. I haven't got this to the table yet, and it's sitting on my table at home. That's the Wolfman from played. Joan of Arc, dude. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> that, <Wolf? laughs> that guy has, That's true. Uh, has yeah. a lot of hair on his face. <laughs> yes, that is very true. Um, he just, uh, the designer just sent me an updated version of the rules. So, and I knew that those were coming. That's why I haven't got it to the table yet. So, that's a good sign. I just got that a couple days ago. Well, it's still in development stage. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. it was out. No, 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 no. Not yet. Not yet. But um, it's supposed to be coming out this year, I believe. Ah, uh, okay. So you, I forgot this was on your list. So did I. <laughs> I mean, it was fun. Don't get me wrong. We did play this one, and we I enjoyed it, but I didn't. It says Warhammer. So. Yeah, I didn't see. Well, that's one of the reasons why I put it on my list. But 
There is. They've already announced some expansions. Yeah, Dark Angels and Blood Angels yeah, are coming. Oh, Dark Angels. Those are my favorites. Um, I just don't know that there's that much differentiation. I mean, Dice Masters just feels like Dice Masters. I, I don't disagree. They added that whole ranged attack thing yeah. in. Sure, but it's still Dice Masters. Right. My problem with it is I'm okay with anachronisms in gaming sometimes, but it just would feel weird to me to have a Warhammer tank and Spider-Man <laughs> up against, you know, Doctor Strange and some orcs. So what's that game you, you like so much called Duel Move of on! Ages? Ah! Yeah, but in Duel of Ages, that's the whole point of the game. In this one, you already have that established continuity, oh, and I then think, they bring well, in other stuff. I think within the Dice Masters universe, that's kind of the point. You can have At this point, yes. Ninja Turtles going up against Space Marines. Come on. <laughs> Western Wedges was my number 10. I just like the whole idea of a Western game. I hoped it was good, and it was. This one I was very pleased with. I think it's hit my top ten of the year too. So yeah, this was low on the on your uh, anticipated list, but it's one of the ones you like. Yeah, the it most. worked really well. I'm actually very excited. And uh, next week we're playing uh, live. A week from today, actually, we're playing the, the expansion. Yeah. So anti up. Um, I think you can rob a train in the expansion type oh, thing. I'm so that's there, cool. Baby. Let's do it, Samuel, and I will team up. Okay. I will rob. I will arrest you both because I have never broken the law in Western Legends. I'll give you half if you help him betray. Something. I've been. <laughs> I've been. <laughs> I'll do it. I, my whole life, my whole life has been about loyalty and honor. And how much did you say? <laughs> <laughs> All right, is that the last one or is there more? Oh, no, Z, oh, sorry. No, <laughs> this no, is the me. last one. <clears throat> Zombicide Green Horde, that's right. And this was an absolute knockout of the park. Um, they did very well. Uh, I like the orcs. Is that a werewolf zombie in the middle? Yeah. They have those. Here? Yeah. No, that's a dwarf. Oh, he's, he's just, wearing the head of a wolf. He, he's wearing the head of a wolf as a helmet. Got Which it. Which makes sense. They're very protective. Good for <laughs> keeping the rain off of you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's wearing the head. Just, there are zombies. Just a little bit of leaking through the eye holes. There are, that's, oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> there are zombie wolves in, in Zombicide. Yes, so. they are. Uh, and this was this was a great uh, standalone expansion for Zombicide Black Plague, and uh, it's it's I, I like it. I like the system. I knew I was going to like this because of the orcs. The orcs are quite a bit more powerful than your regular zombies in um, in Black Plague, but um, that's okay. You know, it's still a really fun time. We played this at Dice Tower Con, and the guy I played it with had everything uh, for. Zombie side Green Horde and Zombie side Black Plague, so it was a very fun thing. We had a full crew of dwarves uh, going up against the uh, orc zombie horde, and we had a trebuchet out there. It was a really fun, really fun game. Had a great time. So uh, definitely not a disappointment. Cool. Well, there you go. That's our anticipated games. I think that's the last one, right? Yeah. All right. Let's shoot back to the original slide. Um, the uh, as we. We, we'll take if you have some questions, go ahead and ask them. We'll answer a few questions live before we go into it, and then in an hour at noon, we'll come back and talk about our our 2019. Of course, realizing that we're just kind of guessing. However, our guesses yeah, yeah, weren't yeah. that bad. Well, I was just looking here now. I got two that did not come out, and of the eight that that leaves, I only really disliked one and found one other one to just be okay. Probably won't go back to it. Hmm. That's pretty good. There's yeah. a lot more information about games, and we also tend to pick games from our designers and companies that we trust. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, it's so, a theme you're probably excited about. You know, they have to work a little extra hard for you to dislike that thing. Mm -hmm. If it's a theme I don't care about, much like uh, Vision to Trait, I just don't illustrate it. Yeah, Imaginarium was, was the only real miss for me on my list. You haven't played it, I thought. I haven't even played it, yeah. But uh, that says, I guess, a little bit. Um, I don't know why I would have included I guess it was the art that... It's that, a weird-looking game. It was yeah. captivating at the time. Right. I mean, and I, again, I do like it. If you can find a copy and you like Euro games, I would say try it. Just expect some rough rough edges on it, but that's part of the charm almost. Yeah. Uh, some people, someone asked, it, or the surprise that flew under our radar, we did a whole top ten list on that. Yeah. So you can go back and, always, and see always. that. Um, the... Someone mentioned you didn't put Fall to Rome on your thing, but Z oh, Z it would do not, that every year. Would, we would not know it was it wasn't announced. Right, like for example, there's going to be a pandemic in 2019. Yeah, we don't I would know put, what it is. I would put good money on that. 
Yeah, they do one every year. Well, unless, again, for some reason they need to stop. Every year they have the... Uh, if it didn't sell, I mean, <laughs> what was that about? <laughs> Wait, you is, need, isn't this you need to stop making pandemic? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean they keep making them as long as they keep selling. I Do you guess. think Legacy will come out this year, the third one? I don't know about that, but the other series, the Around the World series, whatever they're calling that, is Pandemic That's... Survival series. They do one every year, based on wherever they hold the finals for Pandemic Survival, the tournament. Hmm. And they, you know, the idea is they work with a designer from that place to make a game about that place somehow, you know. So they did like Netherlands, you know, and now it was uh, Rome, obviously, with Paolo Mori. And so they've, they've done three now. We're, but we don't know where they're going to be the finals. We don't know wh what the game's going to be about. So this wasn't announced. Yeah, but this is the first time that they've actually kind of, inter for, you know, entered into something that's not a natural disaster, isn't it? Because um, this one was like a battle. This was like... That's a disaster? No, it's like a war, though. It's not a natural disaster. Sure, I mean, I pandemic guess so. is kind of based upon this whole idea of, you know, natural disasters and the yeah, rising tide. Yeah, well, the last is, one was flooding. Yeah. And the one before that was disease still. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they have the Cthulhu spinoff. That doesn't know. So once a day, she come out with Pandemic, the Twilight Imperium edition, which would then put Z in a very awkward position. No, it wouldn't. No, unless they... It would still no, be it would only put me in an awkward position if they put out Twilight Imperium 5th edition Pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm like, oh, wait, oh, I want I do want to fight galactic disease, but do I really want to do it for six hours? I don't know. They don't need to be Twilight I'm Imperium. It could just be like Pandemic, the pickle. mega game. And there's like this big pandemic with small minor games involved, and pandemic it takes six sales, hours. Basically, is what you're saying. <laughs> wow. Pandemic. Oh, pandemic Cthulhu though. wasn't a natural disaster. That was a. Well, that's what said that, that. That's what he said. Oh, sorry. He's behind us, I guess. Yeah, that's what he said. I, I'm listening to. Oh, you're right. Coming up. <laughs> Hang on. Um, Sam does not dislike. Someone asked why you dislike Keyforge. He didn't. He was just in the mode of calling it a stupid card game. I think. No. Yeah. No. I. I. It's. You just offended people. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize for my slippage of verbiage. Um, Why? There's like 20, there's like half the people out there who like hate Keyforge. They're like, no, yeah, I, we got no, you, Sam. No, it's, <laughs> it, 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 Keyforge isn't a stupid card game. I was just talking about how it's small and compact. And of course, you could play it three times in one sitting. Uh, Sukiyumi is a sprawling game. It would take the entirety of this table to play. And I played it three times. So there's a difference there. That's all I was saying. All right. Well, we're mostly just asking, people are asking questions about the 2019 anticipated stuff. So you'll just have well, to yeah, wait and see you'll that. You'll find out. So we'll do that bit. in an hour at noon Eastern Standard Time. So uh, that's 11 Central, 10 Mountain, 9 Pacific. Good morning, Pacific Ooh. people. That was solid, that's man. Well mad. done. That was, right that was there. very difficult. Oh, and if you live in Newfoundland, it's it's one. There's that other time zone that goes out there. In Hawaii, I have no idea. In Korea, though, I do. What time is it in Korea in right Korea, now? In Korea at noon, it's, it will be, well, time zone has changed. So it would be midnight. It's midnight in Korea right now? No, it's no. 10.53, I think. Is it exactly 12? No. They don't change the times over what the years, so it's either my, 12 or 11 hours. home nation of Cuba? There's no clocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. They haven't discovered the concept of time. She was. It's what you're saying. If the sun's out, it's time to do things. Well, I think there are. But then when the sun goes down, you hide better, from the monsters. We better add this. All right, folks. All right. I mean, Thanks their for army does still have kind of like outdated Russian equipment. Thanks right? for watching. Until next news. time, I'm Todd Vassal. I'm Z Garcia. Wendy up. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Which is in an hour. Take care. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.